Praise the Lord, young people. This is Brother Torrance coming to you, trying to get us going for the Saturday night chat. Um, before we get started and pray, please grab your Bibles. All right, let us pray. Pray. Dear Heavenly Most Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to bring forth the word. Dear Heavenly Father, that's the undertake for the young people as they prepare themselves for the word. And Lord, we ask that you undertake for the word that it kids hide in their heart. Lord, thank you for the teachers that was able to pull the word together. Lord, as you continue to take for the young people and their families that they go through their day by days, finishing up school, and those um, moms and dads that's out there working pretty hard. Heavenly Father, continue to take for their safety and protection, Lord. In Jesus' name, pray and give thanks. Amen. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Saturday Night Bible Class. We're happy to have you back here with us. Thank you for coming back. My name is Sister Liz, and I will be going over the books of the Bible, followed by Sister Citra with the memory verse, and then Brother Covian, who will be bringing you the lesson. Before we begin, make sure you have your Bibles in hand and that you're ready to receive God's Word. Let's get started, though, by reciting the Old Testament books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, then Ezekiel, and then Daniel, Jose, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Hey guys, Zachariah, Malachi, that's Hey guys, Zachariah, Malachi. Alright guys, today's book of the Bible review is on the book of Joel. The book of Joel is the 29th book in the Old Testament under the division of minor prophets. The book of Joel was written by the prophet Joel. It is not known when the book of Joel was written, as the book does not contain any specific events nor name of kings. The book of Joel is known as the first prophet to prophesy about the day of the Lord, quoted by Apostle Peter during his speech to thousands on the day of Pentecost. There are no famous stories found in the book of Joel, just stern calls to action. Let's look at the famous scriptures. The first one comes from Joel 2.1, and it reads, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and set an alarm in, the, in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the it Lord is come. nigh at hand. And the second one comes from Joel 2.32, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnants whom the Lord shall call. Now let's look at some of the important points and summary of the book of Joel. The book of Joel can be divided into three sections. The first one is the plague of locust. The second, the call to repentance. And the third, the future of Judah. In the first section, which covers chapters 1 through the first half of chapter 2, refers to the plague of locusts, or the past plagues, could also potentially be the future invasions on the kingdom of Judah. In this section, Joel pleads with the inhabitants of the land, which are the Israelites, to turn away from all their ways and come back to God. It describes a time of desolation. In chapters 2 and 3, it is known as the call to repentance. In these chapters, he is pleading with the Israelites to return to God. And as we read in the famous scripture, that he is asking them to come back. And he's saying that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And in the latter half of chapter 2, all the way to chapter 3 in this section is one of the greatest promises of hope in all of the Old Testament. It covers the Spirit of God, the judgment of God, and ultimately the coming day of the Lord. So it begs the question, 
Are you ready for Christ's return? Have you turned away from your wicked ways? Have you asked Christ to come into your heart and your life? If you have not, let today be the day that you turn away and that you receive the gift of Christ. Praise the Lord, young people. I'm Sister Citron. Tonight I'll be bringing you the memory verse portion of the lesson. Tonight's memory verse will be coming from uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16a. Get your Bibles. Have mine in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and read it together from the word. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16a. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. Amen. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go and do our drills. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16a. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16a. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. All right. Get with me one more time. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16a. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. All right. Everyone, uh, that is the memory verse for tonight. We thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, thank you for always tuning in. We certainly appreciate that. We hope you are enjoying the lessons that we are bringing to you. Um, we also want to let you know about the uh, ALBM, uh, ALBM uh, YouTube channel. And here it is right there. I want you guys to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. So that way you'll be getting those messages and you'll get alerts when we post new content. Uh, we do have a Sunday service, a Wednesday night, and we also do the youth chat services online. Uh, if you do subscribe to the channel, then you'll be able to see uh, other messages and things as we post them. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in uh, and we'll see you next week. Praise the Lord, everyone. Brother Kobe, and then we continue with the story of Moses. We are now up, un, up to the Passover. Um, we've had plagues and more plagues. And now we have one more plague leading up to the Passover. One more plague. Because remember, we had a very stubborn Pharaoh who refused to listen to what God said. And now he's really, really going to get hit with some serious suffering for all his people because he just continued to be stubborn and not listen to the Lord. So let's open and let's have a word of prayer and then we'll talk about where we're going to be tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Lord, I ask that you will forgive me. I ask to be hidden behind the cross and given what to say. Show me how to how to give your word tonight, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, just please give me your anointing to speak. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Give every heart uh, wisdom, understanding to listen and learn what you have to say. In Jesus name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Now, this is going to come from the book of Exodus chapter 12. Of course, I'm not going to read every scripture, but Exodus objective chapter. from Exodus chapter 12 in the story of the Passover is to teach that Jesus died to cleanse us from sin. Um, how we're going to understand it is because as we see how God used the blood that they put over their doors and the angel of death passed over them, we're going to see that in the same way, if we allow the Lord to sprinkle his blood on the doorposts of our heart, that is how we become saved. That is how we are cleansed from our sins. It's because of Jesus shed blood on Calvary. We're going to talk about that later. Now, um, at the beginning here, we know that the Lord came and he set the institute of the Passover in order. And he spoke to Moses and he spoke to Aaron and he told them what to do. He told them to have all of the Egyptians go and uh, kill, a, kill one of the lamb, cook it. They're going to have that for dinner, but they're also going to take the blood of that lamb and they're going to spread it over each one of the Verse door. 7 of chapter 12, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Go down a little bit further. Verse 12 says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. 
I am the Lord. You think God's playing around with Pharaoh? Pharaoh still ain't listening, still ain't let his chosen people go. Now he's got another plague he's got to deal with. Verse 13 says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. How many plagues have happened? How many times has something come through and the the chosen people of God were protected Verse from the one Moses goes and he gets the message out to all the people, to the elders, and he tells them what they need to do. I'll read it. Verse 21, then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill and kill the Passover. Gave them all the instructions for what was going to happen, what the Lord was going to do. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door. And I will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. So it's really important that everybody follows the directions that were given too, because all firstborn, unless you are covered by that blood, remember what our objective was, unless you are covered by that blood of Jesus, the firstborn in each one of these households is going to die because this is the plague that God has executed because of Pharaoh's stubbornness. He's still refusing to let the people go. Now he's got to deal with one last plague. 29. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Just imagine the scene here. You got a 12 o'clock midnight where everybody, as that angel of death moved through, the ones who did not listen to what God said, the Egyptians and all of the firstborn, even the cattle, the beasts are dying. You can hear this wailing probably and, and, and just all kinds of sorrow going on as the firstborn are dying. And it's all because Pharaoh was stubborn and he refused to let the people go. OK, um, finally, Pharaoh's now going to give an order to leave. He's been a little stubborn. No, well, not even a, I can't even say a little. He's been very hard headed. He's been deciding not to listen. But finally, with his own son even dying and all of the firstborn, now he wants to listen. I said in verse 30 that. Uh, right at the end part, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. My goodness. And then verse 31, now Pharaoh says, okay, fine. Now I have to go ahead and listen to God. All of this stuff that has happened, all of these plagues, now he wants to listen. And he says, he, and verse 31 says, and he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. Also, verse 32 Take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Now he's like, look, just go, just go. But why did it have to take so much for Pharaoh to come to the point of listening to what God has said? Um, verse 36, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. So in other words, um, the Lord gave the his chosen people favor and the Egyptians gave them things that they were going to need for their travel. Bring the final points in. I want to read right from the study of the book so that everybody, everybody gets this. Um, the, the, the book says, with death in every Egyptian home, Pharaoh and his people wanted the Israelites to go and go quickly. We just went over that. Then this was the Passover, right? That was one of the greatest events in history. A night when a million slaves were freed. Pharaoh finally agrees a million slaves have been freed, just as God had told Abraham 400 and some years before that these people were going to be freed, just as he said. God told him what was going to happen and what God said was going to happen is happening. Is that a little bit ironic today that as we're seeing biblical prophecy play out in the world today? Um that was the night that God's promise to Abraham came true. God told him 400 years ago, the Israelites would be delivered from the Egyptian bondage. Listen to this paragraph. All this time, God was taking care of his people, but none of the plagues were in the land of Goshen where the Hebrews live. God protects us and he knows what's best for us. Not only does he protect us and he knows what's best for us, coming back to our objective, to teach that Jesus died to cleanse us from sin. God sent Jesus to us. 
through his shed precious blood on the cross of Calvary. Oh my goodness. We can be. God knows our hearts and he knows if we have accepted him truly. And because we have accepted him, because we have chose to accept Jesus Christ's death, burial, resurrection, we, we have accepted what Jesus Christ did for us. That blood is sprinkled upon us now. And when he sees his son on us, we, won't, we, we don't face eternal death because Jesus Christ lives in us. His son died for our sins and we accepted that gift. And now we're covered. By the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus saves us from death and hell. That's what it saves us from. We all have to die one day, you know, not unless the Lord comes and the, and the rapture happens before, but we'll all die one day. But the beautiful thing about it will be from here straight to the hand of Jesus. We are absent from the body and present with the Lord. And that's thanks, for, that's thanks to his shed blood. And then us taking the responsibility to accept that gift that he gave us on the cross. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because of the gift that Jesus gave us and the Passover gives us a good example, because of the gift, because of the shed blood, because of us accepting his shed blood and accepting that gift of salvation, we pass from eternal death into life with Christ when we leave this world. And that's something that we all need to have joy about. And it's something we all need to be given a huge amen about. Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. We take that blood and we sprinkle it upon our hearts and we live for Jesus. Now we saved and now we don't face that hellish end because we accepted Jesus Christ. That right there deserves an amen. And I know I'm thankful today that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. Because where would Brother Kobe be today if it wasn't for Jesus Christ? So if you don't know Jesus, get to know him. You still have time to learn who my Savior is, and you still have time to allow him to come in to your heart and your life so that you can be saved and so that you can be with him one day. Amen. Prayer. Father God, we just, Lord, we give you thanks today, Lord Jesus, for what you've done, brother, for, for saving us, for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, the Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have a right to the tree of life now because of the gift that you gave us through your son, Jesus, being willing to go and down that cross for our sins to heaven and Father. Lord, we were headed to hell and there was no uh, way we were going to get out of it. But Lord, you loved us so much. You looked on our sin and you looked on the things that we were doing, the things that did not please you to heaven and Father. And you said, I'm going to send my son. Because I don't want these people to die and go to hell. You didn't create hell for us. And Lord, we can now be delivered from hell as we accept your gift to Heavenly Father. So I just want to give you praise and thanks today to Heavenly Father for this word, for the studying of Moses, for learning the Passover, for how when you saw your blood, saw when you blood, saw the blood, you passed over those people, Lord, who uh, put the blood on the doorpost. And just the same way, Lord Jesus, you're going to save us from hell and, 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 and death a hellish death, dear Heavenly Father, because we have accepted you. We accepted the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ dying on that cross. And we just thank you every day, Heavenly Father. Help us learn to learn every day to live more and more for you as we should, dear Heavenly Father. And now in these days and these last times to tell others to make sure that they know who you are so that they can be saved as well, Lord Jesus. Help us not to be selfish and quiet about our salvation and things that we know that can save people from hell. Help us to share and help us to tell people how they can come to Jesus as well. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. All right, as we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now. And uh, we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet. Um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now. 
because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, well, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they were afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There is a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelation 20, 15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. But, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T. But <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, 23 is where that scripture is found. Okay. So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay. He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. First Corinthians 15, three to four, pardoned for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay. So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's book of life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay. For again, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter one, verse 12. OK, so we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to... You have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission. 
uh, the leadership in this group. Um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return, but a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you've started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.